Hi, I am the Old Outdoor Broad, and welcome to the Old Outdoors. Well, woohoo! Here we are in the desert setting up the tent, and we are just so happy. You know why? Because I love camping in the desert. I love tents where you can slip the poles through a few rings. It uh, makes it easier to get it up off the ground. And then we attach the uh, various and sundry clips around the body of the tent. Woohoo! Such an accomplishment. Now I'm going to put the pole that goes over the door. Uh, it goes through a couple of rings. There are some flaps with grommets uh, on either side. And then we will attach the clips. All right. Good job, dum de dum de dum Now let's go ahead and do the same routine on the back door. We'll kind of uh, hum a little tune here. do 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 while we're waiting. And we are almost done, so we're going to come around the tent here pretty quickly and take a bow. Well, how about that for setting up a tent? So let's talk about this tent. This is the uh, Big Agnes, uh, let's see here, Gilpin Falls Powerhouse 4 Mountain Glow. Now, they don't make this tent anymore, this particular tent. I'm going to talk about it uh, anyway. Uh, on the uh, old broad scale of ease of setting up, I give this one an 8 on a scale of 10. Uh, the reason for that is anytime I can push poles through versus clip on uh, on the ground before I bring it up, uh, that makes setting up a tent a whole lot easier. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Standard stuff here, pole uh, with a pointy end and a hole. And then as you see as we go up, that is a clip, clip, and then right there I can put the poles through without having to clip. Most of these clips are actually pretty easy to get, but right here over the door, this double clip, that's actually kind of difficult. But with the door open, I can reach my hand in and pull, and that actually makes it easier for me to get those clips. Currently the door is open, and this is a standard stuff pretty much, just a wrap around there and a slip through in order to hold the door back. But there's something very interesting about this tent that uh, I would like to share, and I don't know if it's pervasive in all Big Agnes uh, tent products, but it's worth considering. So take a look here. And you see a lot of mesh, right? Up on the top there. So like I think just about everyone who buys a tent uh, does, good tent owner me, I took this out to a local park to set it up when I first got it. And I was very pleased with all the mesh, and then I wondered, where are the windows? So most tents have a solid piece that you can zip on the inside in order to close the window, so to speak, and have privacy. This tent does not have that. So now you're thinking, wow, so broad, how do you get privacy then? <laughs> now out here, this is, as I said, I'm back in my favorite spot in the uh, southwestern desert, and I'm probably not going to have to worry about privacy too much out here. But in a public campground where your neighbor is a stone's throw away, this is an issue. On this tent, the only way to get privacy is to put on the storm fly. When the storm fly is on, you have privacy. You can't use any of the mesh with regards to like laying in bed and looking at the stars at night. Uh, but you do have privacy, so that's the only way to get it with this tent. So I mention that because, um, look, look, <laughs> if you're looking at other products, I just don't want to film that over again. If you're looking at other products, Big Agnes products, tent products, uh, take a look for this and uh, be sure that it actually has zippered windows if that's important to you. Um, I had no clue uh, when, when I set this tent up that that's how it was going to be. This tent is called Mountain Glow because it has a built-in light system. So this is the switch, one of them, there are two. And you see on the side here, there's on and off. When it's in storage, you put it in the off position when you're camping. You put it in the on position. Now this doesn't turn them on. What it does is it activates this clicker right here. So this is a clicker and you just click once 
for a high and you click a second time and you get a low. So there's actually two levels of uh, light available with this. And the lights themselves are sewn into the seam of the tent. You like that little hanger? I'll explain that in a minute. Now you're wondering, hey old broad, what was that little carabiner hanging up on the roof of your tent? And there's another one. Watch. See that? I can grab those. So when I'm slipping into my shoes, sometimes you know how you need to lean against the wall? Because I'm an old broad, right? So these enable me to have something to reach up and uh, steady myself a little bit if needed. Now over here, as you can see, so that's the head uh, of my sleeping bag. And so I arranged the head of my sleeping bag so that I'm by one of the, the uh, clickers because they, they cross, the lights uh, go uh, crossways over the tent. So this way, if I need to get up in the middle of the night, and I'm an old broad, so I'm going to get up in the middle of the night, uh, all I have to do is reach up, click it, I have light, I can slip on my shoes and do my thing. This is a battery. So this battery comes with the tent. And uh, two things about this, it's a decent sized battery. It has a, a nice amount of power and we'll follow the cord there. And you can see it is currently charging my phone. And that uh, little unit to the right, yes, those are for hearing aids. So I'll charge my hearing aids. I showed you the battery inside. This is a little juice solar panel charger. Now this you can charge up at home and bring it out fully charged. And then of course put it in the sun and it'll be charging. So it connects to the battery inside the tent. And I just leave a little uh, zippered opening there in the tent to run the cord through. And that's how I recharge that battery. So again, this is something, I put it out every time, but obviously it's predominantly for long-term uh, trips where I need to keep uh, regenerating uh, power. I have had this tent in the rain a couple times. Once a prolonged but steady rain, and once a 45 minute complete downpour. So I wanted you to get a look at the seams. Now these are on the floor, so you can see the color difference between the regular floor and the seam. So these are factory sealed seams, and I was really, really impressed with these. Uh, in the rain, I stayed bone dry. Uh, I mean, they work great. I'm not going to put the storm fly up uh, today. It's, it's pretty basic. I need to use a stick to get it up over the top, but there's nothing uh, unique about the storm fly except it has the same seam seal on it that we saw on the floor. And again, I've been through two very different types of rain experiences, and uh, this tent worked great. So I am perfectly comfortable camping in this tent in the rain. I know that I'm going to stay dry. I just happen to have uh, nowadays a down sleeping bag as opposed to synthetic. Uh, so those of you who've camped and hiked uh, for a long time, you know how important it is to keep down dry. So really impressed with the seams. You may think this is kind of a weird thing, but I have to tell you, this is the world's greatest stuff sack. So I want to take a couple minutes and just go through the stuff sack that came with this particular tent because it's really cool. This stuff sack has two compartments. Here's one big roomy compartment and here's the other that currently has the Stormfly. That's the Stormfly in there. Dividing these two compartments is this bag right here. That stores your poles, so your poles go right there. Now this is kind of funny. Right here are directions on how to set up the tent. And it says here, and it has the little picture of the scissors, I don't know if you can see it, but it says to cut this and put it someplace. Well, why would you move that? I mean, you just leave it here and then you always have it and you always have your directions. But the way this is laid out, stuffing the tent into one half of this is super, super easy. And I can get my little welcome mat and the tarp I put underneath in here as well. You can see I carry some batteries in one of the pockets. The other pockets have some pieces to the poles. And then when it's all in, all you do is fold it. And then these just clip. 
and then you pick it up and you're ready to go. So as opposed to the cylindrical stuff sacks that you cram everything in and then you put the poles in and they kind of scrape against the side, this is well worth it. And even if I get another tent, if it doesn't come with a highly functional and easy to use stuff sack like this, I'm keeping this one. In camping and hiking, as in most things, it's the little things that make it really, really enjoyable. So one more thing uh, regarding this tent before we call it an episode. Zippers. <laughs> the simplest things make the biggest difference. Cheap zippers are going to ruin a lot of stuff for you. And I don't know that these are necessarily cheap zippers, but I haven't had this tent for a long, long time. But Let me show you what's going on here. All right, right there. Can you see that? So the zipper has start to split and I haven't had this tent very long. So I'm gonna have to pack this puppy up and send it to Big Agnes for repair. According to their website, they do repairs. So um, we're gonna find out and hopefully we'll get this zipper issue resolved. Well, that's it for this episode of the Old Outdoor Broad. I hope you enjoyed it, found it informative, and I hope to see you in the old outdoors.